During a demonstration on Thursday, Just Stop Oil charged that the driver of a coach transporting migrants to the Bibby Stockholm barge was trying to kill them. As the van returned asylum seekers to the barge for the first time since it was evacuated due to the finding of Legionella, members of the eco-activist group attempted to obstruct it. Nevertheless, carrying a giant orange flag, the bus pushed its way past 23 protesters who had stepped into the road and attempted to take a seat in front of it. As it ran through the block on its way to the vessel, which is presently stationed in Portland, Dorset, the environmental zealots have subsequently accused the driver of having intent to kill. In addition, the protest group released a photo of a guy they claimed was pushing a bystander to drive straight through the protesters and called for an inquiry into whether or not he was employed by the Home Office. Going after the government's immigration policy is a change of direction for Just Stop Oil, who typically only concentrate on environmental problems. After several months of disruptive protests, JSO recently delivered a further blow to the people of London when it announced that it would resume its daily slow marches for three more weeks, starting on October 30. At least 30 anti-barge demonstrators cheered the asylum seekers as they arrived in Portland on Thursday and held signs that said, Scrap the barge and Refugees Welcome. 29 of the 39 individuals who were taken from the ship in August were scheduled to return on Thursday. According to the Home Office, examinations for Legionella and enhanced fire safety procedures have been finished before their return. A few have secured housing with family members, a single person has gone back to their nation of origin, and a few others were unable to remain on the barge due to mental health concerns. Dramatic video from Thursday morning's rally showed a crowd of protesters rushing the coach while wearing orange clothing. While another group sits on the road in front of them, the protesters, including a woman on crutches, push back against the moving car and yell at the driver to stop. When the bus reaches the group that is seated, the driver keeps slowly moving forward, forcing them to stand up. As the car drives on, activists brandishing a banner that says, No Prison Ships, turn to face the approaching car. Later, JSO released a statement in which they conceded defeat and frantically charged the driver with having intent to kill. The driver crashed through the barricade, endangering the lives of people in front of him, according to a spokesperson. We are sorry to report that we were unable to halt the transportation of refugees to the prison. Additionally, they disseminated video of a man they said got off the bus and urged a bystander caught in the confusion to advance into the throng. Many questions, the representative continued. First things first, who is this man? After asking a bystander to drive straight through demonstrators, he was seen on camera attempting to cover his face. Later, he got into the coach. It needs to be looked into right away if he works for the Home Office. The Home Office stated it is in communication with the police on the event and chastised the environmental group for their actions. The disruption caused in Portland by a small group of people is totally unacceptable, a government department official stated. Relocating asylum seekers to other housing options, like the Bibby Stockholm, is a more manageable and cost-effective solution for communities and taxpayers. We are maintaining close communication with law enforcement to support their ongoing investigations and guarantee that the necessary security measures are in place. Three people were detained during the rally, according to Dorset Police. A representative stated, on Thursday, October 19, 2023, at 12.43 p.m., Dorset Police received a report of a protest on Portland Beach Road. There were reports that the group tried to stop a bus and damaged the car. Police were on the scene assisting with another nonviolent protest. In response to the report, they conducted inquiries and detained two individuals on suspicion of causing criminal damage. A third individual was detained on suspicion of causing criminal damage after a second report of criminal damage to a police vehicle was received. After a brief delay, the coach was allowed to resume traveling. Dorset Police will cooperate with organizers to support people's rights to peaceful demonstrations, as we respect their right to lawful protest. But it's our responsibility to make sure everyone participating abides by the law, to stop any disturbances in public, and to make sure the neighborhood can continue with its legal activities. We are still investigating the incident's full circumstances.
JSO defended its choice to object to the bus by saying, we are aware that our government's plan for additional oil and gas will result in more people being forced from their homes. Forced from their ancestral homes as a result of the misbehavior of our corrupt politicians. Incoming immigrants to the UK should not be detained in prison ships, but rather treated with common humanity. Not when we're watching. Today, we are acting in love and solidarity with everyone who is new to this country. On Thursday, further demonstrators gathered in Portland to voice their opposition to the barge's usage as a shelter for asylum seekers. Annika, from the Portland Global Friendship Group, assisted in creating welcome bags that contained toiletries, makeup, notepads, and a map of the vicinity for the newcomers. We just want to greet the migrants and give them a small expression of our concern, she stated. It feels like a prison here with the amount of security that they have to go through, and I think the barge is a horrible idea. Some of the people who had been staying on the Bibby Stockholm were in contact with Candy Edwin of Stand Up to Racism Dorset, she said. They hate it, saying it feels like a prison, the speaker stated. Some hate being on the sea, finding it very difficult to leave, and being completely cut off from the community. Attending the demonstration was Portland Mayor Carolyn Parks a local council member who recently lost a legal battle in the High Court against Home Secretary Sala Braverman regarding the legality of sheltering asylum seekers on the barge. She declared that, as the port's planning authority, Dorset Council, would be the target of further legal action. Vulnerable people are not treated in a humane manner by Bibby Stockholm, she declared. In order to address safety concerns, the Home Office stated that it has been collaborating with the Dorset and Wiltshire Fire and Rescue Service, which includes constructing a fourth gangway. According to a spokesman, every employee participating in the fire evacuation has undergone approved fire warden training and will participate in frequent drills. She said that everyone being taken to the Bibby Stockholm would be notified five days in advance, and that they would all be examined through police and immigration databases and evaluated based on a set of appropriateness criteria. Their IDs and fingerprints would also be kept on file. She said that testing had shown no presence of the Legionella bacteria following a thorough system cleansing of the water system. The government is committed to ending the use of expensive hotels for asylum seekers, the spokeswoman stated. Transporting asylum seekers to alternative housing facilities, such as the Bibby Stockholm, which offers on-site food and medical services, is more manageable for communities and more economical for taxpayers. The head of Care for Calais, a non-profit that supports refugees, Steve Smith, stated that the organization was helping asylum seekers fight the accommodations in court. That includes helping survivors of modern slavery and torture to legally contest their accommodations on these sites, which goes against the government's own suitability criteria, he stated. Because of these difficulties, some of these moves are already being postponed or cancelled entirely. It's crucial that people on the barge are able to keep their independence and are able to come and go, to enter communities, to experience the local culture, to learn about life here, stated Caroline O'Connor chief executive of the organization Migrant Help. Isolating a traumatized person from the culture they're attempting to join doesn't help them. The 39 men who had previously resided on the barge, according to a letter signed by Nicola David of the One Life to Live campaign, described the Bibby Stockholm as a terrifying residence that felt like a prison and left them feeling stress and anxiety. One of the asylum seekers had even made an attempt at suicide. Nothing about the Bibby Stockholm has gone well, the speaker stated. The Home Office had to settle for something 50 years old, rotten, and unfit for use, it wasn't even their first or second choice of barge. The barge's plumbing, fire safety, and Legionella issues caused constant delays in repairs. I found that it is more expensive per person than hotels, not less, which means the government's plan is ineffective. Additionally, some claims are being heard by the High Court. In an attempt to prove that hosting asylum seekers on the barge was legal, Portland Mayor Carolyn Parks lost a High Court battle against Home Secretary Sala Braverman last week. Mrs. Parks sought to make the case that it was unlawful to house migrants on the barge in Portland Harbor due to violations of equality and planning regulations. However, Mr. Justice Hallgate decided that Mrs. Parks, the mayor of Portland and a member of the Portland Town Council, 
lacked an arguable case. The Home Office's attorneys contended that Mrs. Parks's claim was out of time and without merit, and they recommended that the judge decline to allow the challenge to move forward with a trial. According to government attorneys, the local planning authority did not believe that a permit was necessary. Additionally, they contended that a public sector equality requirement did not establish a general principle holding non-British asylum seekers together aboard a vessel as illegal. There has been a significant response against the barge because locals are worried about how the newcomers would affect their neighborhood. They worry that the inflow of 506 men, who will be free to come and go as they choose, will overwhelm already overburdened services like GP surgeries. Concerns about the impact on tourism, personal safety risks, and an upsurge in crime and antisocial behavior have also been voiced by others. Serious fire dangers have been cautioned by organizations such as the Fire Brigades Union, which has also voiced opposition. Ms. Braverman retorted that the boat had been utilized as lodging on multiple occasions in the past. In August, Ms. Braverman said on BBC Radio 4's Today program, I think the barge is safe. I'm quite sure that this barge is safe for human habitation because it has previously housed individuals, including oil rig workers and asylum seekers. Barges of this type have also been utilized to house asylum seekers, for example in Scotland. We complied with all guidelines and procedures before setting sail. The Home Office has started to send letters to asylum seekers to confirm the Bibby Stockholm's re-embarkation and notify them that they will be accommodated on board, subject to the vessel completing all necessary tests, a Home Office spokesman previously stated. The letters restate that all asylum accommodation is still provided on a no-choice basis and identify the future procedures for applicants for asylum. Because the vessel and other alternative accommodation sites have on-site healthcare and culinary services, round-the-clock security, and purpose-built safe accommodations, they are more manageable for communities and more inexpensive for taxpayers. Observers of the group, which typically solely addresses environmental issues, will take notice of Just Stop Oil's presence at the barge demonstration. In a Met Police operation yesterday, the group's founders, Roger Hallam and Indigo Rumbelow, were taken into custody with the intention of preventing serious disruption. Just Stop Oil posted a video of the police raid on Mr. Hallam's house on X. When the videographer asks the eco-zealot about the raid, she gives him the thumbs up and says, all good, before she is carried away by one cop. A Just Stop Oil supporter questions the police about the objects they are confiscating as they search the premises and check drawers with torches. Following months of disruptive protests, Just Stop Oil delivered a further blow to the residents of London when it declared it would continue its daily slow marches for three more weeks, starting on October 30. This announcement led to the arrest. After the raids, a resolute Just Stop Oil declared that it would not be frightened and will go on with its scheduled slow march demonstrations in London. We are not going to allow our criminal government to intimidate us. The organization stated in a statement, they are complicit in the greatest crime in human history by maxing out our oil and gas reserves, not content with cheerleading on war crimes in Gaza. The discovery of new oil and gas will cause unspeakable agony and ruin billions of people's lives and means of subsistence. There has never been a democratic mandate to wipe off the habitable planet, and no one has ever voted in favor of this. Supporters of Just Stop Oil are fervently dedicated to putting an end to all new gas and oil. People will take action to safeguard humanity if our government fails to act morally and responsibly. The harsh reality of the situation is that neither our politicians nor our corporations intend to behave in the best interests of our youth or the nation at large. It doesn't matter if the people in authority are aware that they are committing genocide. Because this is the way the next generation and all subsequent generations will perceive it. Our buddies who are being held by the police and incarcerated comprehend this concept just as much as we do. A 57-year-old male and a 29-year-old woman were reportedly detained by the Met Police on suspicion of plotting to create a public nuisance. Both of them are still being held. A representative for the Met told Mail Online, as part of an operation aimed at preventing serious disruption by Just Stop Oil ahead of more protests expected in London later this month, officers have arrested two people. 
The group wants to cause as much disruption as possible, it has said in public. The two were taken into custody. Greta Thunberg, an environmental activist, was accused by the police of violating public order following a demonstration outside a hotel in central London. Following the protest outside the Intercontinental Hotel in Park Lane, which was hosting a significant gathering of oil executives, on Tuesday, the 20-year-old was one of 26 persons charged. According to Scotland Yard, in order to comply with the rules, demonstrators were instructed to relocate from the road onto the pavement. Thunberg was accused of disobeying a ban on public gatherings, police only provided his address as Dorset. The Swedish activist joined a protest outside the Energy Intelligence Forum, EIF, formerly known as the Oil and Money Conference, and was later spotted grinning as she was taken into custody and driven to a waiting police van. Social media footage showed a police frog marching the campaigner to the van while ordering other demonstrators to move aside. She had earlier addressed the crowd outside the hotel as part of a demonstration against the EIF event sponsored by Fossil Free London. She had called on environmental activists to reclaim power and attack spineless politicians for their inaction on climate change. The Public Order Act Section 14 imposes conditions, and Thunberg is accused of breaking them. According to the officers, they requested that the demonstrators relocate off the road onto the pavement so that they may carry on their lawful protests. According to them, the restrictions were put in place to avoid disruption to the public. She was granted bail and ordered to appear on November 15 at Westminster Magistrates Court.